the question is, in the history of the passing down of the gospel traditions, how do we know that the later scribes or copiers of these manuscripts uh, didn't overegg the pudding, didn't doctor the evidence to make it look more Christological and more Trinitarian and more this and more that? This is a perfectly fair question based on the study of the some 5,000 pieces and whole manuscripts we have of the Greek New Testament. And let me say, first of all, the scholars who say this, including Bart Ehrman, are right, that there are no two manuscripts that are identical. Secondly, there were some tendentious scribes. There were some scribes out there who felt that they could pay, play fast and loose with the material and change it to suit their particular theological agendas. There is such a thing as the doctrine of the evidence by some scribes. I mean, that's one of the purposes for text criticism. We're trying to get back to the original text, ad fontes, back to the origins. What was it that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John actually said? And then we can evaluate it. That's the point of text criticism, is to get back to the original state of the document. So, yes, there is normal editing and there's tendentious editing. There's normal copying and there is tendentious copying. What there is not, so far as I can tell, is some kind of conspiracy to cover up what the original text said. What, we, what we've got, let's take a really good example. The Western text of Acts versus the Alexandrian text of Acts. Now, the Western text of Acts has 20% more material in it than the Alexandrian text of Acts. It's called the Western text because it probably came from the Western end of the empire. The Alexandrian text was a text of Acts copied in Alexandria in Egypt. Well, what's the difference here? Well, the Western text has value added. It heightens the role of Peter. It uh, pumps up the story of the baptism of the Ethiopian eunuch. It adds the word holy to the word spirit about 15 times. Uh, it's clear that the scribe who produced the original copy of the Western text of Acts was wanting to amplify. He, it was the amplified version. He wanted, he's not really so much distorting things as clarifying. It's sort of in a world where there were no footnotes, we're putting the clarification right in the text. And that's what's going on. Yeah, now we know that that happened. But we have all kinds of criteria by which we can evaluate which is more likely to be the original reading. You know, what's the more difficult reading? Which is the reading that best explains all of these later variants? Those kinds of things. So the bottom line about all of that is I don't see any evidence of a conspiracy theory. That is, an attempt to cover up the original text. I've seen plenty of evidence of an attempt to amplify and clarify or uh, rephrase uh, what the original text uh, said in ways that are helpful to the second century church, the third century church. Some of this is just pastoral. They're assuming that the literate persons who would read this or would hear this might not understand it without clarification because, of course, the church of the third century is very different from the largely Jewish church of the first century AD, so they need some help. <laughs>